Kiva. This is Kiva. And Kiva is very nervous and anxious, but uh, she also doesn't show respect for personal boundaries. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, create personal boundaries uh, and help teach a dog to respect an invisible line on their own just through your actions. So we have the guardian who's going to uh, basically she's gonna come in a second with a bowl of food. Now, if you want to pan over here to the couch, we have a couch with a little uh, table in front. So what we're going to say is the dog is not allowed to go in the area between the couch and the table and the sides that go on the side of the table towards me. So the guardian is going to go ahead and come on in. Now turn and face her. I'll put it on the couch. Walk right at her. There you go. Stop. So she's stopping at the point of enforcement. Now take one small step backwards. And take a step right back towards her. So you're going to mirror her. And, her, and I wouldn't even let her chin over the couch. So take another step toward There you go. And don't let her go past you. So now keep your hips pointed at her no matter where she goes. And she's already coming to me. Grab a seat. And carefully don't sit on the, your food. Uh, stand up again. Now remember, she can't come from this line on this side of the table to the couch. So walk. And I want you a little bit more assertive in terms of walking towards her. Big sudden step. Right there. There we go. So now we're going to wait. Now, now, now go ahead and take one step backwards. Oh, oh, one caveat. Never step backwards if the dog is moving towards you. Okay. All right, so you take one step backwards. If she comes towards you, take a step right back at her. Take another step backwards. Step. And again, she's still a little close. There we go. And again, don't let her go that side. So if she goes that side, beat her to the punch. Right, there you go. Excellent. That's the movement. That was great. She got the message. When she SITs, take a step backwards. And then wait right there, and then slowly SIT, but sit on the edge, because you should expect the dog to get up and challenge you when you sit down. And now grab your bowl, and go ahead and have your snack, and if at any point she gets up and walks towards you, she can get up and walk towards you, but if once she crosses, if she's a foot away from the table, you're going to kiss and stand up and march her. And put it behind you on the couch. There you go. Now, because she's so big, normally the dog wouldn't be able to put its head over the side, but she is. Now, keep your hips pointed at her wherever she goes. Imagine there's a string tied from your belly button to her collar. So wherever she goes, your hips naturally follow her. Now she's acting like she's not interested. She's totally interested. She's just trying to hope, hopefully you're gonna play a little quick hooky. Whoops, that was me. That's cortisol in her blood for being the nervousness. All right, take a step sideways. So when I step, I take one step at a time. You can just film her for now. And then go ahead, now she's not paying attention, so you can grab a seat and kind of uh, hit the side of the bowl with your fingers so she can kind of you can. There you go. And just kind of lean back on the couch. And go ahead and I just eat. Uh, here, I'll tell you what. Uh, make it perfectly set. There we go. Excellent. And she said, she's about to SIT. Just wait. <laughs> Take a step backwards. So whenever she sits, she's taking less, she's challenging you less. So always step backwards. But if she gets up and moves towards you, you mirror her and take a step towards her. Crinkle that bag. See how that caught her attention? Grab a seat, and now we're going to make it a little bit more difficult. Take your bowl and put it on the table, right in front of your knees. And if she gets up, you're going to, again, defend it. Now, open the bag and take two treats out and put one on either side of the bowl. And move your belt. Excellent. Again, step right at her. She's too close. There you go. Step, step backwards. And you go and grab a seat. And go ahead and put it down. Excellent. So what we talked about off camera is creating situations where we have time to practice this. This is a family. They're kids. Sometimes mom is paying attention to other things. Mom and dad both have really hard jobs where they're feeling, working for others a lot. And so when they're home, they need to be able to relax. But there are times when we do have the ability to practice. So now grab your snack and go ahead and eat a little bit. And so it's important for her to see and watch you. Normally, you're not watching her. She's not watching at this distance. She's like pretty much got her knee on your shoulder. Uh, or, well, I was going to mean on your, on your knee, but uh, uh, chin on the knee. Uh, but so what we're doing is we're helping her practice uh, respecting boundaries, and we're not doing it by putting her in the other room or using a fence or using a chain. She's learning to do this on her own. And the fact that she's sitting and she's not whining, whimpering, and trying to go back, she's going to do that. When you have the kids, the kids are a distraction. So she's going to use that to her advantage. When you're distracted looking at the kids, then I can swoop in and get yeah. some peanut butter sandwich. So you have to get the kids on your, uh, hey, this is what we're doing. Okay, you know, and as you go a little bit more advanced, maybe one of the kids kind of holds the sandwich off to the side. 
and it's making a temptation a little bit. So we're, cause again, now we're pretending or we're setting this, this up to practice this. And then when the kid accidentally does hold the treat off to the side, she has practice not taking it. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just come into the shot here real quick. I'm doing this on my knees because she gets a little bit upset. She has a lot of cortisol in the play. So what I like to do is I like to recreate situations like this where we can help the dog practice the behavior we want in the easiest capacity possible. Then we do it maybe with the TV volume on where it's like some crazy kid show or one of the kids is running around. And so we're gonna gradually work back up to the real world situation that you guys deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and the dog just automatically stays behind the boundary on its own because you've taught her the behavior that you want her to respect. So this is how you can teach your dog to respect invisible boundaries and stay away from people when they're eating food.